All right, so back to this uh, block diagram, I'm going to talk a little bit about the blocks that are on the, the left, namely the uh, RFSOC from AMD, formerly Xilinx. Uh, this is the, the baseband uh, that we've been talking about. It is a, uh, a, an evaluation board from uh, AMD, formerly Xilinx, namely the ZCU-208, which has an eight channel ADC uh, multi-channel ADCs and eight channels of DACs sampling at five giga samples per second for direct RF sampling and uh, up to 9.85 giga samples per second on the DACs with basically a six gigahertz analog bandwidth. There is a next generation of this called the DFE which is optimized for 5G with some hardened IP uh, whereby the analog uh, output, the IF, goes up to seven and one quarter, 7.125 uh, gigahertz. Uh, on the right there is the, the Otava DTRX2 that, um, that Wen and, and um, Georgia have been mentioning. This is the up and down conversion to and from IF to the millimeter wave. DTRX2 stands for dual transmit receive by two. Um, and that is a card that uh, we co-developed with, uh, with Otava and that we support directly on the Xilinx platform for up to uh, 31 gigahertz of uh, FR2 millimeter wave. Just a quick block diagram of the, um, the uh, RFSOC device itself. Uh, this is what you may commonly refer to as an FPGA. Uh, Xilinx, of course, was a traditional leader in programmable logic to which are added some multi-channel data converters, uh, namely, as I mentioned, uh, eight channels of DACs, eight channels of ADCs. There's another version of, uh, of the card or of the device that uh, has up to 16 channels, very, very popular in phase array radar, especially for digital beamforming, which is not necessarily the topic of today's discussion, but just so that you know that um, these multi-channel RFSOC devices are extremely popular uh, in the marketplace for all of these phase array applications. Um, just, uh, I could probably spend an hour describing the RFSOC, but just a few highlights here. Uh, one of the most important is the, um, something called variable output power. This avoids uh, having to uh, do your back off in the digital domain and having to sacrifice SNR due to quantization noise. So you can, uh, you can actually trim the, the output power of the DACs in the analog domain. This is called variable output power. And uh, that, that's something that we do indeed support. Um, here is block diagram of the digital up converter on the top and the digital down converter on the bottom. So this is all hardened IP. Uh, this does not take resources in the programmable logic. If you have ever worked with FPGAs, you might know you can build digital up converters and down converters in logic, but uh, it's much more efficient to do this uh, in hardened IP of the RFSOC. So we control all of this from the MATLAB environment that we, uh, that we have that I will show in a bit. Um, some of the highlights in, in this chain, of course, the um, digital uh, quadrature mixer um, that uh, can mix up and down with very, very fine um, frequency and phase shift. So again, for uh, phased array applications for beamforming, uh, in some cases you, you would want to apply uh, some degree of phase shift in the digital domain through these complex mixers, and you have uh, up to 18 bits uh, of uh, quantization to apply phase here in the digital domain. Uh, up, uh, digital interpolation uh, filters to um, do uh, various interpolation factors and decimation on the, the DDC. And um, at, the, at the input of the ADC is a uh, 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 digital step attenuator uh, directly in the chip. And of course, some, some, um, some PLLs inside that can drive uh, the, the various channels of, of DACs and ADCs with uh, a lot of combinations uh, for internal PLLs or using an external uh, clock. Uh, just a little bit more detail on the uh, digital up converter. I uh, wanted to highlight this because this is a source of a lot of confusion among, uh, among users of this technology. Uh, frequency planning, 
as you know, is, is critical in uh, signal quality, uh, understanding what happens in the digital domain when you interpolate a signal, uh, how good are the interpolation filters at attenuating images that happen naturally uh, through the math in, in the digital domain. These are all things that must be uh, taken into consideration, modeled and understood. And again, um, we do a lot of modeling of the, the digital pieces uh, in MATLAB. Uh, again, MATLAB being the ideal modeling environment. And we can predict uh, some of the uh, the, the, the images that, that may be uh, present after interpolation in this way. And that's a very important thing to, to understand and to look at once you're, you're trying to get a clean signal out of the, uh, in this case, the digital up converter and the DAC. And of course, at the output, um, the effects of a reconstruction filter. Again, you will have spectral images replicated at multiples of the sampling rate. That is just an inherent physical a reality of a digital up and down converter, or, or rather a DAC. And uh, the images, of course, can be attenuated by an analog filter. Uh, you have to have a trade-off between sampling rate to spread those spectral images further out such that the uh, roll-off of the filter can be effective to uh, attenuate your signal to the, the, the degree that you wish to attenuate it to. And these are all considerations that you have to, to understand in order to get a good signal from, uh, from the baseband, in this case, the RFSOCC device. Um, as in all DACs, there is an envelope, sine x over x envelope that, uh, that happens in the, in the analog domain at the output of the DAC. There are various um, methods of uh, boosting the, uh, the frequency response, for example, in the second Nyquist. Uh, there's something called a mix mode that, that is applicable, and all of these things are going to impact the signal quality coming out of the DAC and then that go into the, uh, the uh, analog domain. So let's look a little bit at the um, DTRX2. Here's a block diagram. We support that natively in our uh, MATLAB application called RFSOC Explorer. Uh, we do not model it. Uh, we could. It it's, would be a fairly simple model, uh, not to the extent that Georgia models the beamformer, um, but nonetheless, we support all the control aspects directly from MATLAB. So the uh, operating frequency, the uh, digital step attenuators, uh, turning on the various receive and transmit sections, uh, all of that is uh, controllable from the MATLAB environment that you see here called the uh, AVNET RFSOC Explorer. Um, as Georgia mentioned, um, in MATLAB there is a rich variety of waveform generation capabilities. Here is an example of something called the 5G Toolbox where we generate 5G standard compliant uh, test waveforms for downlink, uplink, uh, and all sorts of, uh, of standard compliant uh, release 17 waveforms from the 5G toolbox. We can bring those in natively uh, into the, uh, from, from this GUI and, and just drive the DACs by loading those waveforms into memory on the board and then they play out in a continuous fashion from the DAC with all of the control elements that I mentioned, uh, digital up converters, um, interpolation filters, complex mixer, variable output power, all of those things can be controlled from this environment natively in MATLAB. Here's a baseline of the signal quality that we measured with Rodin Schwartz uh, FSW with the K144 package for 5G um, measurements. Uh, this is just a baseline through, uh, this is not through the DTRX2, but uh, just to establish the, uh, the baseline performance from a simple Ballon card. These are the results that we're getting. I believe if you squint a little bit, you'll see the 1.5 uh, percent EVM there, and this is 800 uh, megahertz carrier aggregated, uh, and we chose the extremities for two of the uh, the carriers at uh, each uh, 100 megahertz, and we're demodulating both and and looking at the EVM performance here. Uh, here is the same scenario, carrier aggregation. Uh, this is uh, 5G standard compliant carrier aggregation. 
and we demodulated the two extremities now through the DTRX2 at 24 gigahertz through the uh, FSW uh, Rodian Schwartz spectrum analyzer with the K144 package. And uh, I should know these by heart, but 2.6, 2 2.7% 2 uh, EVM, once again, on the two uh, component carriers at 100 megahertz. And these were standard compliant waveforms generated from the 5G toolbox. So um, in, uh, in summary, I've touched upon some of the characterizations of uh, the baseband signal quality. And anytime you look at signal integrity, you do have to consider how good the, the signal was when it left the DAC. And so if you want more information, there are some references here uh, on, the, on the Xilinx parts, or AMD, I should say and um, some of the more important manuals and, and documentation where you will find all the details. And uh, just to, before I hand it off to, uh, to my friend and, and colleague, uh, Matt Burns here, just um, to, to put a link to Samtech. Samtech works very, very closely on all these applications with AMD. Uh, they, they did the, uh, the interconnect between the Otava and, um, and the, the, the the carrier, the ZCU-208, and, and Matt will talk a lot about, about that. And uh, here are some more references where you can get some more information about that. So uh, with that, I will pass it off to Matt to uh, talk some more about the interconnect and the signal integrity. <laughs> 